Hello, this is part two of the display replacement project and this is my third video about this uh, Datron 1071 seven and a half digit multimeter. I highly recommend watching the previous two videos if you haven't done so to better understand what we are talking about here. I will put the links in the description. And let me briefly describe what has been done so far. The first video was a repair video. I got the meter in a non-working condition, I repaired it and calibrated it to some extent, limited by the equipment I have. But there was still a problem with this gas discharge display. It is disconnected right now. And it was barely usable. I believe it is suffering from a so-called cathode poisoning. Uh, some symbols here were almost invisible and digits were hard to read. The second video was uh, part one of the display replacement project in which uh, we discussed uh, three different approaches to uh, attaching a microcontroller to the meter and driving some other uh, kind of a display. I proposed using several graphic displays which are cheap and readily available. I built prototypes using these uh, three different approaches, discussed all the advantages and disadvantages and showed uh, the code in C which I wrote in the Arduino development environment. Here we have a working prototype according to the approach number one, as I called it uh, in the part one video, with a modification here which I showed at the end of that video. In this video I am hoping to build a final version using this approach. It's time to remove the display. I will try my best not to break it, just in case I might need it for some experiments later. There are 56 pins there, but only 24 are soldered. Must be easy to desolder using my desoldering station. All pins are desoldered, which can be tested by wiggling them with tweezers and checking if they move on the other side. Look here. Now we have to deal with pieces of double-sided sticky tape here and here. And according to the service manual there must be one more piece here below the nipple. If we didn't care about the display the easiest way would be to just cut all the pins instead of desoldering them and peel the display off, no matter if it breaks. But trying to preserve it is certainly more difficult. I think I can try uh, to split the tape using this metal ruler by pushing like so, but it is too wide for this side. I need something else. And I'm not sure how to reach that third piece. Perhaps applying some heat with a heat gun might help to carefully peel it off. It seems that I succeeded splitting the tape on both sides using this tool and did not break anything yet. And now I should be able to reach the third piece like so. Here it is. I managed to remove the display without breaking it. Look how this block of symbols, which was the worst, is visually different from other segments. And by the way, this corner was chipped from the day one. I didn't do it. So, I have a prototyping board of sufficient size, which I bought on eBay for 
slightly less than four dollars delivered from China. How cool is that? And I also have five um, displays, which are raw displays this time, as opposed to this one sitting on a board, uh, which I used for prototyping. I attached the front panel to measure the distance, and both the board and the front panel flex a little, so I am going to measure here, closer to the corner, where they are more rigid. There you go. Uh, let's call it six and a half millimeters. Uh, let's see. A display mounted on this board will take about four and a half millimeters. Uh, this will fit just fine, but unfortunately there is no extra room for some sort of a board-to-board -board interconnect. The lowest profile connector I could think of is something like this, with just raw pins sticking out of the board on the other side. But this would take another uh, 4.4 millimeters or so. And clearly we don't have this much room left, so we will have to use just very short raw pins between the boards. Here I trace the circuit on this board. The display has 13 pins and the board has 8. Uh, here we have a voltage regulator, 3.3 volts with a capacitor after it. And this is a 10 ohm resistor for the backlight LED, assuming connecting it to 3.3 volts. If connected to 5 volts, an additional 100 ohm or so resistor is needed. And the problem with buying these displays is that uh, there are no data sheets and there are different types sold everywhere and sometimes the sellers are not aware of the differences. The seller I bought these displays from had a picture of one type uh, but I got this type instead. Fortunately, it is exactly the same type I have here mounted on this board and I know how to use it. I cut out this piece of prototyping board to fill all available space here to have more flexibility in case I want to put more components on this board. Here we are, after quite a bit of careful soldering. I also put here this 3.3-volt uh, regulator with this capacitor after it. And uh, this is a P-channel MOSFET to turn on and off the backlight LEDs. And this is to delay in software uh, turning on the backlight until the displays are initialized, to avoid all sorts of flashing during this process. The displays already have these uh, thin strips of double-sided tape on them, to stick them to the board like so, but in this case I need to rise them slightly so that the wiring will fit underneath. So I'm going to use this uh, thick double-sided sticky tape which will add about 1.5 millimeters um, so that the whole thing will fit almost exactly into the available space. Notice here these uh, surface mount uh, 100 ohm current limiting resistors for each backlight LED. Here is my new prototype based on AT Mega 164PA microcontroller. I'm using Arduino Mighty Core library to support it. Thank you very much, MCU dude. I wrote a simple test, uh, just printing display 1, display 2 and so on. And notice what happens if we don't delay turning on the backlight.
I found that uh, resistor dividers, which I used uh, to shift logic levels from 5 volts to 3.3 volt levels uh, for driving the displays, don't work very well with 5 displays. In fact, I couldn't make this prototype work reliably until I replaced one of the shifters on the data line with a proper uh, shifter based on a MOSFET, like so. And this is a bidirectional shifter, which is not necessary in this case, and that's why I thought that uh, dividers should do just fine, but it turns out not to be the case. Here I have uh, two MOSFET-based level shifters on a small piece of prototyping board using small surface mount MOSFETs and resistors. Here I have a working prototype, so it's time to build the controller board. Here is the controller board, ready to go. This is our Mega 164PA. 20 MHz crystal, programming port, 8-bit latch, connector uh, to the main board, connector to the display module, and 9 level shifters. On the other side, just some wiring and a few bypass capacitors. And these two capacitors are for the crystal. And by the way, one of the viewers suggested that I can buy replacement plastic latches from McMaster because the original ones are falling apart. So I found in the catalog which ones uh, should fit and I bought a set of 10 and they fit perfectly. Here is the part number. Here is the module installed into the meter. Here is the display module in place. This is my final version of software. Here I select Mighty Core board based on Mega 164. Variant is P or PA. Standard pinout and 20 MHz frequency. This is the display library I'm using this time. Uh, this is to declare all five displays. This is the setup method. This section is exactly the same as before. I explained it in my part one video. This section is to turn off the backlight. Uh, this is to toggle the common reset pin for all five displays. This section is to uh, initialize and rotate properly all five displays. And this is to turn on the backlight. This is the main loop calling display data. We will look at it later. Uh, this is the interrupt handler, which is almost exactly the same as before, except that the data is read from port A this time and the interrupt 0 pin is on port D, so there is no need to remap one pin anymore. This is the display data method, where I distribute all the blocks across all five displays. This is to display a regular block. This is to display that special first block. And this is to display symbols. And because symbols can overlap, to ensure smooth transition, I use a trick here. I remember previous two bytes, and if this method is called with the same two bytes, it does nothing. Otherwise, it first calls uh, this display symbols method with black color, and then only with the actual color, which is red. And this is to actually print the symbols. This block is to deal with volts, this is to display amps, and this is about ohms, 
this is about percent and this is about ppm and this is for calibration mode and this finally is for remote operation using gpib let's give it a go Now let me switch the range and enable the filter so we can see more digits. There you go. I don't quite like the result. This is the best possible angle I found, but the displays are not very bright and the viewing angle is so limited I am not happy at all I think it is even worse with the front panel in place if I look straight into the display it's okay but from some angle it's not very good and the brightness is not consistent I think this one is brighter than this one and the white frames of the displays are visible. I should probably paint them black with a marker or something. This is after painting the white frames of the displays black with a permanent marker. They don't stand out anymore. This is a view from a different angle. Not very good at all. And it seems to me that on camera it shows a bit better than in reality. The meter is back together and ready for use. I would call this a limited success. I don't quite like the result. I will keep looking for better displays. If you have any suggestions, please let me know. The link to the discussion is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.